Hi, this is a Types Editor Setup Introduction. I'll be using a dedicated Mimmel, completely offline, cross-platform, and easy to install Types Editor. As this description here says, it prioritizes right-to-left editing, but I have no trouble using it as a left-to-right editor. As of now, it's actively being maintained by its creator, Igor Canin, so massive props to them. I think of Catvan and Types very much like Techworks in LaTeX. It already takes many marks, but I also believe it's more accessible than the official online editor and I don't expect its features nor layout to change much, so the videos won't be visually too different from one another. I get that it might look a bit hacky downloading software from GitHub, but all we care about is the releases page, where you download the appropriate download file. If you're on Windows, you will want to choose EXE installer, and if you're on Linux, choose App Image, but I believe Fatback is also available by now. To download on macOS, see this ongoing issue. I downloaded the app image because I'm using a basic Linux setup without flatbacks. While you wait for the download to finish, if you're logged in, you might as well show some love for the editor by starting the repository. You can also subscribe to all sorts of different events so that you don't, for example, miss out on future update releases. Arguably the most impactful changes done to Kappa are the ones updating the types compiler, usually days after its official release at most. Overall editor improvements such as ones listed on its roadmap are without a doubt also important to keep an eye on. Next, I'll move the downloaded app image file to a more permanent location and mark it as executable. The stock app image icon is not the prettiest, but I won't directly interface with it much anyway. That's because I can simply create a shortcut to it on the desktop like so. Once you launch Kefan, change the layout as you so desire. You can scale, swap, extract and remove the different windows. Newer versions of Kefan come with an outline window, which I will move in between the preview and the compiler messages. My theme matches the system's default dark. I'll keep it dark themed so that you won't go blind watching the video, and because I notice the video quality doesn't degrade as much. Moving on, I'll also change the default font to fair code, because I really like to make use of its ligatures, such as one made for implication that is found all throughout types. Let me also bump up the editor's font size so that you can see more clearly. Catfin gives you the option to override the current editor looks by specifying what's called editor mode lines. Essentially, there are options you can manually insert into the first 10 lines of a file to let Catfin know what style properties you want to override. Their full list is available under the wiki tab. In case you want to have the same exact cap and installation on multiple machines, I suppose you could copy the automatically generated configuration file and share it among all of them. During use, Catvan doesn't introduce any new file formats. It simply lets you edit the types file, which you can then export to PDF through the top left menu. I would like to also add that the XFCE desktop environment allows you to enter full screen mode. You can return to windowed mode by pressing Alt plus space. As far as spell checking is concerned, I found out on Catvan's GitHub page that on Linux, specifically for the app image, you can install additional Huntsville dictionaries with your package manager. But depending on your distribution's default locale, you most likely already have the right dictionary to spell check with. After all of it is set up, I turn on the very useful pair of options and vert preview colors and follow editor cursor. The first is self-explanatory and the other accurately matches the cursor's position with the position in the live preview. At the moment, you can either make the preview area appear or disappear, but not pause its refreshing. Any packages that you ever include will be downloaded into a folder, the path to which you can find through Catvert settings under the compiler tab. There, you may also choose any external paths which you want to allow Catvert to access. For example, images which you only store in one place and don't bother copying into the same folder as the actively edited types file. At least in the XSE desktop environment, setting the app image to act as a default opening application specifically for .type files is quite finicky.
Still, I ended up creating a new man type called text slash x types along with an associating custom icon. To do that, you will first want to copy the following into a file, such as types type.xml. To apply it system wide, execute this command, otherwise replace system with user and it will be applied for just the current user. I went with the system wide approach. Either way, you're free to remove the XML file. Now prepare an SVG of your choice if you don't want the icon to remain a generic text file icon. This time it is important the file name is matching the one of the mind type we created, in our case textxtypes.svg. You can see that with the exception of forward slash now becoming a hyphen, it's a match. Move the SVG into your themes folder. I'm using the default Tango icon theme, whose location requires sufficient permission to edit so the command to move will look like so. Lastly, update the mine database. Because I decided to go system wide, the command to update is as follows. Should the changes not be immediately applied, try relogging. I acknowledge this is a makeshift solution, more so because the official assignment in YANA repositories clearly states that text slash x types is a deprecated type, meaning we would have to use the newer version that includes VND with a dot for which I'm uncertain how XSE would handle it. However, this definitely isn't the only way of typesetting with types. So lastly, let's take a quick detour to list some other. The most common one is probably the official online editor. Signing up on the Types website is free, but they also provide paid plans. If you're familiar with Overly from LaTeX, or if you're collaborating, then you'll probably want to stick with this option. Because Types at its core is a company, it shouldn't come as a surprise that this web application is one of the sources of income, which is probably why it's not open source. This is in contrast to LaTeX open source Overleaf web application that you can decide to self-host with enough technical skills. The vast majority of collaborative editing in LaTeX and Types is unfortunately done only through this respective pair of web applications. If you want to go offline, and as minimal as one can get, there's a Type CLI provided right on the GitHub. With it, you can easily combine your favourite text editor and PDF view to comfortably typeset. Also used are Visual Studio Code installation, plenty of configurations in Vim, NuVim, Emacs, and so on.